history tells us the Vikings brought the horses to Iceland when they settled here. And this breed, the Icelandic horse, has been here unique since. And we don't mix it with other breeds. There are no other types of horses here. So our horse is skilled and trained to walk in this landscape, in these terrains. You can be crossing rivers, riding over mountains, or uh, we have all kinds of paths. So they are brought up in this landscape. They live in big herds often here. And that makes them very sure-footed and very confident when we are traveling here cross country. It is a very traditional thing to have horses if you live in the countryside of Iceland. My grandparents had many horses. They lived on a farm here quite close by. So it was always my goal to live in the countryside and you know, work and have fun with the horses. It is a big part of our, our work to train uh, young horses and to either to use them for, for uh, like in my case, for the guests that come here to ride, but also to sell them. We are selling a lot abroad. There are hundreds of horses exported to foreign countries every year. So it's a big part of our, uh, our work here also. Farmers here in Iceland, we own a company together. It's called Island Sestar. So we are running and operating tours for, for guests from all over. We are mainly focusing on the multi-day tours across the highlands, around the coast areas, and, and also taking part in these classic events like the roundups. The roundup, it is like a, like a big paddock, which is divided in few sectors, and each farm has its own section of the paddock. During the summer, we bring our mares and the young horses to the highlands, to the summer pastures. And there they have all the freedom in the world, you know, which is great for a horse to grow up and develop. And then in the autumn, late September, beginning of October, we, we gather the horses back home. Yeah, and it's, it's a celebration. We are happy to see our horses again. And uh, friends, family join, also foreign guests. I think it's so beautiful that we can share this, this culture and this experience of riding here with people from Europe, USA, they come from all over. And then we bring our horses home to the farms when they stay close by in the winter. These horses, they enjoy a lot of freedom and they are a little shy, but most of them are used to humans. You know, they are, uh, they are not completely wild and they are own, owned by somebody. The roundup worked that way. All the horses that were in the highlands, they come in small packs into the center, and it's like a pizza. You know, each farm has a pizza slice. You find your horse, get them into your slice. When everything is done, you take your horses home. My name is Isolvur and we are here at Sindrastadir in Lagemot Island. Here we basically do everything involving horses. Breeding, training, teaching, we do competition shows, and then a part of it is selling horses. This farm has been in the family since 1827. I'm born and raised here, so I learned it from my father, my son is learning it from me. He has it in his DNA. His first word was not mom or something, it was horse. So the ball keeps on rolling. Before we had roads and cars in Iceland, the Icelandic horse was the only transportation. So obviously there it started the selection of the strong and stocky horses, carrying people in all weathers and an over rough territory. They say they, they came with, with Vikings, that they brought their best horses here. In Iceland, because of bad weather, they were very small for a long period of time. But now, for the last 30 years probably, we have started thinking about getting them a little bit bigger. The speciality of the Icelandic horse for me is five gates that are trained. There are other breeds that have five gates, but the Icelandic horse is the only one that's getting trained in all five. The braveness, and I mean, they are smart. 
that for me is the biggest quality I would say. And I think that connects directly into this wilderness that they have the possibility of living in. You know, they have to think how they're going to cross a lake or, or, or over a hill or... They have to think, they have to use the brain and then also they're moving a lot, they're strengthening and developing muscles and joints and how to move this leg there and so on. So it's really affecting their bodies and their mindset. So now we just finished rounding them up and we have one, two and three year old horses in the Highlands. So we, well, use the opportunity, they are coming home anyway, getting them into stable and do some young horse work. This young horse training, it's more just getting into their mind a bit. We want our horses to see us in a special way, not as a threat, but someone that is interesting for them and that they are open for ideas and some education. Work. I mean, we have to have in mind, we are making the choice of using them for our pleasure. They are not choosing that, it's, it's our choice. So, so it's our responsibility of doing it in a proper way. And, and they are really fit for it. You know, they are easy to train and, and fantastic to work with and ride if we handle them in a good manner. The spirit of the Icelandic horse is so positive. They are so cooperative. They are very willing to work with you. And I can sense it, you know, when they come to a good path or these grounds, you know, tight sand, then they really, really, you know, they, they enjoy to run. And this, I think, is so worthful. They are easy to handle and very cooperative and happy to work with you and run. This makes fun. You know, it's good for the rider to experience this joy also by the animal. In general, the Icelandic horse breed is, I think, getting more and more popular. It's, it's quite big in Europe. There's a big market for decades in Germany, Scandinavia. America, often in New Zealand, in Australia, Hawaii, Saudi Arabia. I mean, this is one of the purest breeds in the world. So every year there are hundreds of horses going abroad that are sold. It's very professionally done, you know. It is not as complicated as people think because we have companies taking care of the paperwork. We have these wet checks. We want the horses to be completely healthy and in good shape, of course. When we do these tours for guests, there are many, many riders. We have a lot of people that are coming yearly or every second year. They have been here maybe some 10, even 20 times. We have generations, you know, the mom brings her daughter or even the grandma is also with. That's good. So it's both families or just people that travel on their own. maybe 40, 45 riders all together crossing the, the Lake of Hope. Also with hundreds of free running horses running with us. And this is what you don't experience in your home country usually, I think. And the group itself, it's always interesting how they also get connected because it is a challenge and an adventure to do this. Tour always special, they're never the same. We sense it also very much how grateful the people are to take part in this. That makes it very enjoyable. Well, for us here, we are breeding horses for us. But obviously we can't own them all, then we will be up to 500 horses very quickly. So some of them we sell to Iceland. And usually we sell them when they have been trained, you know, as riding horses and competition horses. Now for the so when we are sending a horse abroad, we take them from here to Reykjavik, where the export agencies are, and they, they kind of take it from there. Fantastic to work with and ride if we handle them in a good manner. When we do these tours for guests, my name is Estet Lefson. 
and my company is Export Tester. We are located in Morsusbær, close by Reykjavik. Venture to do this. We are taking care of exporting horses from Iceland to Europe and also to the States. We are between the sellers and the buyers. We take care of the paperwork. The horses are staying in our stable for a few days to make uh, the passport ready. And then we take them to the airport. So we've exported horses for decades now. Early on in the 30s or 40s when the company was founded, we already started exporting horses to some extent. Our export process has evolved quite a bit since then. The process is usually once a buyer abroad has found a horse he wants to export, he contacts one of the four companies that specialize in servicing that market. We work closely and tightly together to provide the service so it's minimal effort for either the farmer or the buyer. The clients are asking for a little bit different things. Some of the horses are just a pleasure horse. Some of them are really expensive competition horse. So if they are going directly to competition, you need to put them in the socks that we are doing to today with two of our horses. Then we call the official wet who is checking if it is the correct horse and if he is ready to fly. And he is also at the airport checking the containers and see if everything is, is okay. They liaise with the customs authorities, with the veterinary authorities, etc. and provide a service to either the farmers or the exporters or the consignees, the buyers of the horses. Then the exporters that specialize in transporting the horses to the airport, they follow the horses to the airport. Yeah, we drive them to the airport and we start to give out the papers. And then we load them into the containers. We have specialized containers in order to transport the horses. There is a person from Iceland, the cargo that takes care of the loading with the wet, official wet. And the veterinary, they inspect the horses both on loading of the containers and the aircraft as well as offloading abroad. And this person uh, is flying with them to Lias and unload them there. We have three dedicated special grooms that we have trained to escort all of the horses and they travel on the plane with each horse and they monitor and supervise the loading of the containers and the flight. And they escort all of the horses and follow them until the stables are brought. And they are always ready in case something comes up and monitor that each horse is safe and well during the transport. It is uh, actually unbelievable how calm they are, the horses, when we are in this process loading them. They are used to be in a group and they are few together in containers. They definitely never suffer. In my opinion, it's a simpler process than carrying a horse by a trailer or wagon. It's less movement and they feel comfortable. They're never alone in a container. And the containers are specially made for this kind of transport, especially for the Icelandic horses. Yeah, it has been growing since 2009. We're exporting. I think well above 2,500 horses this year, for example, which is a growth of tens of percentages year on year. Yeah, it's a growing business for us. Last year was the biggest since 96, and this year is even better, so, so it's growing a lot. My name is Sigurd Marinusson, called Siggy Mar. We are now here in north of Holland, north of Alakmar, it's called Cambrida. It's just two kilometers away from the coast. It's a beautiful place. 
horse riding is my hobby. And actually my aunt is one of the first people in Holland that had Icelandic horses. Icelandic horses are different from other horses. Horses are horses, but the Icelandic horses have a special spirit. Icelandic horses have five gates, and that's the difference than three gaiter, like we call them. And then they have to get used to the four-beated takt in tölt. And then later on, pace is, you know, the fifth gear. <laughs> They are strong horses, they have special gates, they have a special spirit. And that's actually what I fell in love with. And Europeans, once they try it, they love it. Often the people are, you know, the horse lovers, here from the Holland or Germany, they decide to go for a riding tour in Iceland. And then they would like to have this horse, you know, maybe even that special horse that they were riding. But they often think it's really complicated to import it to their home country. But it is really simple, and especially if we help them, they have no worries about it at all. The last few years, a lot of foreign people buying Icelandic horse. Record year, last year, and it will also be in 2021. Last night was a pickup from Lies in Belgium. Everything was really well arranged with Iceland air. And I take them home here and give them a little rest, a few days and then the new owners come and pick them up. And most of the time we turn them out in the fields, especially if they travel together, together in the field, and then they can come to themselves. I always say first the body and then the soul. And that takes time to come from, from Iceland. Yeah, the Dutch grass is, you know, stronger than in Iceland. For Iceland horse, it is used to pour, pour grass in the mountains. They could get Lemon iris, uh, it could be uh, having colic. We have to let it get used to it. When I train for competition, I also ride in the riding hall and in the oval track, but I love to ride outside in the landscape. We have a beautiful landscape here. And of course, the beach close by. I should do that more often. I don't do that enough, but it is beautiful. You know, it is not a coincidence that the horse for us has been often called the most necessary servant. He has been with us since the settlement, carrying, pulling for travel and for leisure rides, everything. So, yeah, he has this name in our books, the most important servant for the people. He still is, a little differently maybe, but still is, very important. So what I love about Icelandic horses is they have, of course, the special gates. They have two extra gates, a tilt and pace, but it's also the, 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 the spirit and the characters. They have such a good characters. They can be very powerful, but still very, very pleasing the, the, the rider, really wanting to please the rider. And that's what I really love about Icelandic horses. We are, of course, really proud of the Icelandic horses and all our friends that are having him as a part of their family. So that's thousands of people that are so in love, actually. So, of course, we are really, really proud. It is always great fun for me as a breeder and their trainer to meet them abroad. I really want them to succeed in whatever jobs or purpose they are, are, are bought for. There is no horse like an Icelandic horse. The spirit of those horses, the gates that they have, it's just amazing, amazing. This is my biggest hobby, the hobby of my life. This smooth tilt or the flying pace, you, you have this uniqueness in the Icelandic horse. Also the strong nerves and this cooperative working will, you know. They become your friends very much and very loyal friends. And of course the horse that is being sold from the country, he is not coming back. There are no horses imported back to Iceland. So it's a one-way ticket. But uh, we know also our buyers and they take very good care of our horses and we are happy to see. I'm just optimistic for the future of the Icelandic breed. I think it's growing and I think more and more people will realize what a fantastic breed this is. And I hope to see further growth in our exports.
If people want to find out more about Icelandic horses and about importing Icelandic horses, they can go to the international organization that's called FIVE. They have a website, FIVE.org, or Horses of Iceland. They can give you all the information you need. The spirit of those horses, the gaze that they have, the acceleration that they can reach, it's just amazing.